Hey, what's up, Stock Compounders? Brad here. So today I want to talk about the 10 cap price. Uh, now, as you know, I just finished this book, Invested, by Danielle Town and Phil Town. And one of three ways that Phil Town goes about figuring out what price to pay for a business, what price to pay for an investment, is the 10 cap price. Uh, and this is something he picked up from Warren Buffett. Uh, in the 2013 shareholder letter uh, to investors for Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett, you know, he said it's the simplest way to put a price on a business. Okay, now the 10 cap price, it's simply owner earnings times 10, right? So you're you're making your money back in owner earnings uh, in 10 years, okay? based on what you pay for the whole business. So that's the formula, 10 cap price, owner earnings times 10. Uh, what are owner earnings? Uh, so the owner earnings are the amount of cash that can go into the pocket of the person who owns the business every year without affecting business operations. So cash that isn't required to keep the business running, kind of excess cash. Uh, and then there's a kind of a simple formula for how to calculate owner earnings. Uh, it's really just three things. The operating cash flow, which you get from the cash flow statement. That's going to be in that top section of the cash flow statement for operations. Uh, you're going to subtract out maintenance capital expenditures. Okay. And that's on the cash flow statement as well. And then you're going to add the income tax. Now, the reason we add the income tax is because we want to value this the same way we, we value real estate, right? Which is uh, owner earnings before paying taxes. Um, so that's why we add the income tax. Now, the, the, more, the slightly more complicated piece here is the maintenance capital expenditures. Um, because often a company on its 10K, on its annual report, doesn't break out what the maintenance capital expenditures is. It'll say what the total capital expenditure is, uh, which is purchase of property, plant, and equipment uh, in that cash flow statement under investing activities. Uh, but it often doesn't break out what's the capital expenditures for growth, growing the business, versus the capital expenditures just for maintaining the business, uh, which is really the number we want for the 10 cap price. Um, so in this case, in the case of Google, which is the example uh, that I'm running through today, there was no breakout of the maintenance capital expenditures. Uh, so let's, let's take a quick look at that. So how do you get the capital expenditures for Google. Well, you go to Alphabet Investor Relations. Uh, you go to the company slash investor relations. Uh, I'm going to find the latest 10K, which is 2019. It's down here, the 10K PDF. So I'm going to open that. And I'm going to search here for capital expenditures. So I'm gonna, here we go, there it is. So this is capital expenditures, total capital expenditures for 2019, $23.55 billion, okay? You can see it's down a little bit from 2018 and it's up significantly from 2017. So that's the total capital expenditures. Like I said, I looked through here, I searched for maintenance in this 10K, and I couldn't find anything that discussed the maintenance capital expenditures. Um, so you can see here, 2019, we've got that $23.55 billion figure for total capital expenditures. Now, the rule of thumb that Phil Town gave in uh, a podcast episode called Invest Ed. Uh, he said, you know, if you can't find the maintenance CapEx, uh, use half of the total 
capital expenditures. So you're assuming half of CapEx is for maintenance and half is for growth. Uh, now there was a study done, you know, for a lot of different companies, what is the range of maintenance capital expenditures versus total capital expenditures? And it tends to be between 20 and 80%. So 50% is kind of right in that, right in that average. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Unfortunately, I'd like to be a little bit more accurate with that. Uh, if, if I spend a lot more time understanding the business of Google, uh, looking through, you know, years and years of annual reports, it's possible that maintenance CapEx is broken out on one of those previous annual reports. Uh, but the more I get to know the business, the better I'll be able to ask, estimate uh, specifically what the maintenance capital expenditure is. But for the purpose of this, I'm just going to use half of, you know, 2019's total capital expenditure. Uh, right. So, so the the important thing to remember here is that when you're looking at operating cash flow and you're looking at maintenance capital expenditures, you want historically reasonable numbers. Okay. And and Phil Town really emphasizes that. Uh, it's important that you're not using a number that's an outlier, particularly if it's a high outlier. Uh, that's gonna that could totally blow your margin of safety in your estimation of the 10 cap price for a company. So I've pulled the total cash flow from operating activities uh, for the last 10 years. Uh, I, I got this from Morningstar because it's just a little faster for me than going through you know, every couple of years of annual reports to pull this data directly from Alphabet. Uh, but you can see here, uh, you know, it's, it's reasonable. The, the 2019 uh, operating cash flow, it, it's following a nice trend from the last 10 years. It's, it's pretty close to a straight line actually, pretty impressive how consistent the growth is uh, from Google with uh, operating cash flow. So that's the number we're going to use uh, for this example, 54.52 billion. Uh, in terms of CapEx, I already said we're going to use half of the 2019 total capital expenditure figure. Uh, and then this last one, the uh, income taxes. So let's just take a, a look at that. Income tax. Let's find Let's find that number in here. So there it is, 2019, $5.28 billion, and it shows the effective tax rate as well. So we've got $5.28 billion in here. Uh, and then we're going to calculate our 2019 owner earnings. We simply take the 2019 operating cash flow minus half of the 2019 capital expenditures. Uh, and we're going to add this uh, provision for income taxes for 2019. Because like I said, we want to get the earnings before paying income taxes. Um, so that's this number here, $48 billion is our 2019 owner earnings for Google. Now, in order to get the 10 cap price, we're simply going to multiply this owner earnings by 10. So uh, the 10 cap price for Google is $480 billion. So if I can buy Google, if I can buy all of Google for $480 billion, you know, that, that's a price that has a margin of safety built into it. I'm, I'm pretty happy to pay that price for Google. Um, now, in order to find out what do I have to pay today to buy Google, it's not just the market cap, okay? If I'm looking at the whole company, uh, there, there's other things to consider there. So let's take a look at Morningstar here. So obviously we have the market cap. We have all of the shares outstanding. We have the shareholders. Uh, we also have debt, right? We've got debt we, and we have cash. So in order to estimate you know, what you'd have to pay to buy a whole business, uh, it's pretty simple. You take market cap, which is the shares outstanding, times the current share price, 
uh, you're going to add the debt, right? Because you have to pay off that debt if you're going to buy if you're going to buy a business. That is your debt now. Uh, so we're going to market cap plus total debt minus cash and cash equivalents. Okay. So uh, in this case, you know that that works out to about uh, one trillion seventy six billion uh, for the enterprise value. And enterprise value is something you can fairly easily pull, very easily, from Morningstar. Uh, Morningstar calculates enterprise value for you. Uh, you simply go to current enterprise value and boom. So 1086 is what Morningstar has for enterprise value. So we can change that to 10. 86. The 1076 I had was doing the math of what is the market cap, adding the debt, subtracting the cash. There's a few other things to consider like minority interest uh, owners, uh, things like that. But you know, for simplicity, we're just going to use the, the Morningstar enterprise value number here. And so basically what this tells me is that I would love to buy Google for $480 billion dollars it would cost me over a trillion dollars at today's kind of stock price in order to buy Google. So Google is definitely not kind of in my strike range um, in terms of 10 cap price. Uh, so on this particular metric, um, Google you know, is, is very overvalued. And Really, the, the, the reason for that is that 10 cap price doesn't consider growth, right? It's assuming that for the next 10 years, all I'm going to get is, you know, operating cash flow from 2019. The, the numbers from 2019 minus the CapEx from 2019 plus the income tax from 2019. Th this is assuming Google is stagnant, you know, over the next 10 years. Okay. So it's a very conservative number, particularly for growth companies, which, you know, Google, I think everyone would consider Google a growth company. Uh, so 10 cap price may not be the best uh, method for determining what price to pay for a company like Google, because growth is such an important part of valuing a company like Google. Uh, but in, in the next couple of kind of pricing valuation videos. We're going to talk about payback time and we're going to talk about margin of safety valuation, which both consider growth. Okay, we have to estimate growth for both of those. So, you know, I'm I'm not too bummed that, you know, we're way off on the 10 cap price because uh, I know it, it just doesn't consider growth. Uh, it, it tends to be more accurate for companies that are kind of in the mature phase. Um, so, but I wanted to go through this exercise with Google. Uh, we're going to compare this 10 cap price to both the payback time and the margin of safety valuation in the next couple of videos. So anyway, guys, that's, that's 10 cap from Phil Town, uh, and Warren Buffett. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this. Uh, if you think I made any mistakes, definitely please point those out. This is really, you know, teaching for me is the best way to learn. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm not attached to anything here. Uh, call me out if, if you see anything wrong with any of these numbers. Uh, obviously, the thing I would like to dial in a little bit more is the maintenance CapEx. Uh, just taking half of the total CapEx, I'm a little uncomfortable with that. I'd like to be a little bit more kind of dialed in with that number. Uh, but other than that, you know, these numbers are pretty straightforward. It's a very simple way, really, to put a price uh, on a whole business, you know, a, a good price, a, a price with a margin of safety built in. So anyway, guys, that's all I got. I will see you in the next video with a payback time pricing kind of walkthrough of Google. All right, guys, take care.